Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited for checking out King Frog from Brain Games. This is for two to four players, age is seven plus, it'll take about 15 minutes to play. And in King Frog, you're going to be playing as a cute little frog hopping around a pond trying to land on your color of lily pads. But it's not going to be that easy because you're going to be hopping over other frogs, you're going to be trying to avoid puddles of water, and land on multicolored lily pads. It is a light, simple children slash family game, but is it good? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. All right, then, we're going to take a look at what you get inside of King Frogs. First of all, we have a handy-dandy rule book with two pages, double-sided, full-color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's very well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all, so big thumbs up on the rule book. Then. I also have a four-player version of the game set out, where you're going to have the lily pads and the water right here. If you're playing a two- or three-player version of the game, those will not be in the game. So in King Frog, what you're going to do is you're going to take control of a specific colored frog. You're also going to get this color of cards. You'll get that color of cards with numbers one through five on them. What you're going to try and do is you're going to try and hop your frog along to get them onto your colored lily pad or a wild lily pad. If you can get onto your color, then you will not lose your cards. If you land somewhere else, say for instance, if the yellow landed on red, then whatever cards you play to get there, you will lose that card. Whoever has any cards left at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game. There's also an alternate victory condition where if you are in first place out of all the frogs, the king frog, and you pass anyone else, then you will win the game. But honestly, I don't ever see that happening except for potentially in a two player game uh, where you have a dummy player. So let's take a look at the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first, component-wise, you're going to get these lily pads. They are all four colors, red, yellow, green, and blue, to correspond with the different frogs. You're also going to get two wild lily pads, where anyone can land on those, and those are good spots. As you can see, they have red, yellow, green, and blue. And then you're going to have a water spot. You never want to land on the water spot, because boom, you just fall in the water, and you lose the card that you play. You're also going to get your four frogs, your crown, who will keep track of who is the king frog for that alternate victory condition that never happens, and then each player is going to get five of their corresponding colored cards numbered one through five. Once you've done that, you're going to decide who's going to be the, the first player, uh, the first person to set out their frog because everything is simultaneous, and then they're going to set their frog wherever they want. So yellow might go here, and then red has the choice to go either here or here. So either in the front or the back, green once again, front or the back, and blue once again, front to the back. So blue will go here. They're the king frog for now. Not going to last very long, but let's get this game up and running. So how you're going to do it is each player is going to choose a card in secret, and they're going to place it down. So we'll place this yellow card, this yellow card, and I'm placing them random. We'll just see what happens. And this green card. Now, your goal is to land on your corresponding color of lily pad. So for instance, the blue guy might be like, oh, I want to go one, two, three, four spaces, because then I can land on my lily pad. But here's where the game gets tricky. It has a, an aspect where you leapfrog over the frogs in front of you. So if the yellow were to go, they would jump, boom, over both those. That'd be one jump, two jumps. Uh, so you're never quite sure how many spots you're going to go. But let's just flip this over and you'll quickly get a feel for it. So we've got a 5, a 5, a 2, and a 3. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take care of whoever has the lowest number. So right now, red has the lowest number. If there was a tie between two, co two colors, so let's just say blue and red play the lowest number, whoever is in last place between that tie would get to go first. So green's going to go two spaces, or red's going to go two spaces, excuse me, one, two. So good for red. They landed on a red. They get to keep their red card. It goes back into their hand. That's great for them. So next we have the three. That's the next highest. Three goes one, two, three. Boom. In the water. That card gets flipped over. We just put it in the middle. I feel like that's easiest to do. And they are never going to get this card back. This card is gone for the rest of the game. That's essentially like they've lost a health point. But also, more importantly, they've lost that very valuable three, which they might need to get to a lily pad. Next, we have a five and a five. So green's going to go first because they're in the back. They go one, two, three, four, five. Bummer. They also lost their five. But they are the king frog for the moment. And then we have the blue who's going to go five. One, two, three, four, five. That worked out really well for blue. They're still the king frog. And they get to keep their five, which is once again huge. Uh, and now everyone else would do it once again, except now the green and the yellow only have four cards to choose from. You're trying to land on your lily pads. What's eventually going to happen is that you are going to run out of cards. So green will use all their cards. They are out of the game. Red will use all their cards. They are out of the game. And then it's down to just yellow and blue. Whoever has the car any cards left at the end of the game will be 
the winner, or in the odd ball scenario where blue ever passes yellow, they will win the game. But that in a nutshell is how you're going to play King Frog. Alrighty then, King Frog from Brain Game. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, two to four players, <clears throat> restricted player count. I also liked it best at four players when you have the two wild lily pids, lily pads in the water. It's not bad at three players. Uh, I was not a fan of it at two players though. And part of the reason why I didn't like it at two players is because the kids really enjoy the strategy of the game. Trying to figure out how many frogs are going to be in front of them when they jump, so which lily, which card they need to play to get to the lily pad they need to get to. And I really love watching the kids' brains just kind of churn as they try to figure that out. But when you're playing with that random frog, it just, you don't get that aspect nearly as much. Yeah, you get some aspects of like, all right, he's played a three and he's played a one, so now we know he's either going to play a two or four or five, but I just wasn't the biggest fan of the randomness of the dummy. Now, granted, I'm glad that they have that, and there is a two-player version of the game, and the kids didn't seem to mind, but for me personally, I liked it best at three and four players. Another comment I have this game is that you kind of want to be at the back. You always kind of want to be at the back, assuming you have cards, because when you're way at the back, you're going to go first most of the time if you play low numbers, which is normally a good thing. Also, if you're, if you're really far back, you can kind of just jump to whatever lily pads you want, assuming you have the cards to do that. Now, the game has a secondary win condition where the frog, the king frog, if he ever passes the person in last place, then that person immediately wins. And that's supposed to be like the incentive not to get too far to the back, I think. But the bottom line is, I in about 15 games playing this and watching the kids play this, I have never seen anyone get even close to that victory condition. I just don't see how it would be possible, unless of course you're playing the two-player version of the game and maybe they get two ones in a row or two fives in a row or something wonky like that after you reshuffle. I don't know. I just, I didn't like it the best of two players and I felt like there definitely was a strategy to be towards the back. Now that being said, the kids didn't really figure it out and this is a light, simple children slash family game, so that's not a big deal, but it is something that I did want to mention. <clears throat> Any other comments over the game? Oh, I mean, you have to know, going into this game, it's incredibly light, it's incredibly simple, this is for families, this is for children, this is not for a game night, this is not for a party night or anything like that. So, if you don't have kids, this one is definitely not going to be for you. Any other cons that I have? No, not really I can think of. Moving on to the pros, really enjoyed King Frog. Uh, I'd say it's a fantastic children's game, a great family game, and the kids in my class are absolutely cuckoo for this game. I have had, I brought in hundreds of games into my class over the last four or five years, and this is only the second game that the kids, after we've got done playing, have created their own version of the game. This and Rhino Heroes, that's pretty dang good company. Uh, and I'll actually, yeah, I'll post it up there. It was really kind of cool. They came up with their own game. They are just obsessed with this game. They love this game. And it has that aspect that I really enjoyed about, uh, what is it, Get Bit, where even if a kid doesn't know what they're doing, even if they're just randomly playing down cards, they can still play the game and they can kind of figure out the game as they go. I played this with a six-year-old. He had no clue what he was doing, but he almost won the game just by dumb luck alone, and I like when games have that aspect. Now, that being said, once you get to the seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds, especially those ten-year-olds, they really start churning their brain, trying to figure out exactly how which numbers they need to to get to which lily pads and they'll even have like a puerto rico kind of thing which i really enjoy where i'll have a girl she'll be like why did you play that four you were supposed to play a two because that'll get you straight to your lily pad what are you thinking and i'm just cracking up i'm like yes i love that uh <clears throat> but but i digress i really enjoy that aspect of the game the kids really love this game and overall if you're looking for a family game or if you're looking for a children's game i cannot recommend king frog it up my kids are loving this. This is going to be one of those ones that I bring in year in and year out. I do not see it going out of style. That is King Frog from Brain Games, a fantastic children's game and a great family game. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. If you were the King Frog, what would you do? How? What would be your strategy to try and take over the world? How does a King Frog take over a world? Um... A I guess a Ponzi scheme or something like that. I, I really have no idea how frogs would take over the world. It would have to be some sort of financial gimmick. Because there's, I mean, they can't go physically head to head. Even if you have all the poison dart frogs in the world in one place, you're still going to have to be doing stuff behind the scenes. So I'd probably start up some evil conglomerate, some, you know, some IPO or something like that. I, I don't even, I don't know business stuff. I'd do something businessy if I was the King Frog. Let me know in the comments below. How would you take over the world as King Frog? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.